Hey guys, 66 here, and today we're going to be making a tier list for all the banned cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. I know this is kind of a weird thing to come back from a hiatus with, but uh, I don't want to be too intense with best do re mi core 90 billion negate deck. We'll, we'll do that after, alright guys? What inspired this video was a video Simo made recently. I, I couldn't understand some of the placements he made, let's just say. So we're going to be making this video try to correct... <laughs> Some of the choices you make, because I, I don't understand, really. We're going to make a good tier list of all the banned cards that actually reflects how good they are. Just as like a ground rule, we're going to be assuming how good it would be in the current format if the rest of the banned list stayed the exact same and it came back to 1. And my reasoning for this is A, it simplifies things, and B, having cards come back to 3 isn't fair to some cards. So for example, Link Cross is like a once return on the summon. So whether it's at 1 or 3 doesn't make a difference. It does the exact same thing. Whereas Chicken Game, for example, so draw 1. So at 1 or 3, that's a difference between a 39 card deck and a 37 card deck. So that makes a huge difference in comparison to the level you know where it makes practically no difference. So I think it's only fair that the card comes back to one. And when a card comes off the list, usually it doesn't go from banned to three, it just goes back to one. Let's just get right into it. First off, Ancient Fairy Dragon. This card was really good at the time you got banned because A, it gave you a free special summon from your hand and B, it gave you uh, more copies of field spells in your deck because you could use a different field spell and then tag it out and replace it with the one you want. Especially in ABCs, for example, you go Ravine, Destrudo, summon Destrudo, make this, pop the Ravine, get Union Hanger, and then you basically got extra Union Hangers in your deck for every copy of Ravine. Now the problem with that now is that Destrudo is banned, which means not very many decks can make this early enough to really fully take advantage of it. So I actually think Ancient Fairy can come off the list, which means we're going to put it in D tier. It's not an F because it's not actively bad, but I think it can come off the list. And I want it to come off the list because it's really good in FAs. <laughs> and FA got destroyed when this thing got banned as collateral damage. We're going to see where Simo put it, and then we're going to sort of react to the reasoning he made behind it. Okay, nothing too wrong with that. Let's move on. Alright, Astrograph. I'm a pen player, but Astrograph can come off the list. Without Electromite, Astrograph isn't that broken. Let's think about it. Let's be honest for a moment here. As at one, we're gonna do. You're not gonna summon Stargazer with it. That's just dumb. <laughs> uh, it's gonna like maybe plus once. That's not that broken at all. It's gonna summon itself from hand, get you a card. Best case scenario, you can like use Daybreak or the Sky Iris to pop your own card to make this work. It's not that easy. It's really not. But Astrograph is our boy. So we're gonna put him in C. And uh, where does Simo put it? Let's see. Yeah, so Simo put it in C as well. We'll just give it to him. All right. Next up, Gofu. So if Gofu were to come back to the game right now, and you drew Gofu, you just win, right? Because this thing legitimately, you summon it. It's a it's a tuner. That's why not. It's on two tokens. So it's one card summon three monsters, <laughs> and one of them's a tuner, so you can make Hulk immediately. Yeah, this is uh, uh, just absurd. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. That's one of the most ridiculous things you can do. It would literally just be the best main deck card out of all of these to open, if you think about it. I mean, in terms of an unsearchable main deck one of, I would rather have Gofu than anything else on this list. Aside from maybe like Grass. If, just think about it. Think about how absurd that is with Gofu. You literally summon it and you get three monsters immediately and there's not even that much the opponent can do about it because the summon from hand effect is an inherent summon and then you activate the effect to get the tokens so like best case scenario for the opponent they can maybe veil or imperm this and then you still have a tuner for free and the opponent had to waste a card in their hand otherwise you literally get three monsters immediately at the start how is this remotely this is just insane i mean <laughs> Like, if you draw Gofu in basically any deck that's, that can run it, so you have, like, links in your extra deck, which is every deck, you just win the game. Even when we second this thing's broken, it's an inherent summon that then has an effect. That summon two more monsters for free. We literally play cards that summon themselves for free. And that's all it does. It's one monster. This thing is a tuner and it's three monsters. 
ridiculous. Easily, I think, S tier. It might actually just be A because of how um, broken some of the S tiers are. We're going to put an S for now because I think it is the best main deck unsearchable one of. Where does Zemo put this thing? He put Gofu in B? Wait, what? How? How do you put Gofu in... Okay, let's, let's listen to this explanation. There's no way. I'm gonna put this in B tier, actually. I think Gofu might be uh, might be a little bit too good, to be honest. He only he only put Goku in... What, what do you mean? Well, it's really good, but we're gonna put it in B tier. It literally summons three monsters by itself for free. But we're gonna put it in B. That makes no sense. This thing is probably ass. Maybe A, just because it's not super accessible. That is a... Gofu in B? That's absurd. All right. Next up, we have Steam. So Steam is really broken because we have Simorglink with Hauk. So you just go Hauk, summon this thing, and then you go Simorglink Im immediately or do it later, it doesn't matter. But this thing will then make the token, and then the token does something, it can revive itself and make another token. This thing is absurd. It's so good when you summon off Hauk, make the link. And then instead of being like, oh, I reproed and used three monsters to make some more to get Barrier Statue, that's broken. It's like, I made Barrier Statue and then I plussed a whole bunch more, so I was easily able to get Masquerade off, so I can also do whatever else I want, slash make other links, slash do whatever I want, because I got free advantage just by having this card in my deck. And considering all the other good tuners are banned, if this were to come back to one, you would instantly play this in with Hauk because it's just the best synergy. So that's probably an A just because Hauk is so broken. Like, consider it. Hauk is trash right now. It's still good, actually. Hauk is still good right now with, like, Despot and Rorodon. But Hauk right now is completely neutered and it's still broken. Imagine it had a good target. Steam the Cloak is sort of like glow-up bulb for me. Uh, a lot of the reason you're going to see these tuner monsters on here is because of Christron Halky Fibrax being able to abuse them in a lot of ways. And Steam is a very good card, but again, it just feels like another glow-up bulb, so I'll give it a C tier. It just feels like another glow-up bulb, but like it literally pluses more. You know, the summon itself is a uh, once per duel, but the token? The token's not once per turn. <laughs> which means that you get two tokens with the revive. So a glow bulb is summon, summon, right? Two tuners. Steam is summon, it's tuner. Token, so you kill the token to summon itself back. So tuner, tuner, and that makes another token. So it's just better than glow bulb. I mean, I think that's it. Maybe it's a B, but any good Hulk card is gonna be really high because the rest are banned. <laughs> and next we have Blaster. So, Dragon Ruler, I think overall are C. Like, by themselves, it's more of a, like a D. You can easily you can easily bring back any one Dragon Ruler. You can't bring them back all, you know, together, because then they start synergizing with each other. But if we're just talking one ruler, we're going to put in C. If you put them in C, we're putting them in D. And the reasoning behind that is, as I've just gone over, if any one were to come back by itself, even with Tempest, it won't do very much. And I love rulers. Yeah, I love rulers, but... They're not that broken if you just bring back one, <laughs> let's be honest. Alright, that's only a block rank. This card's absurd. I mean, the fact that any rank 4 can search this, and then it can just instantly take over the game by itself by plussing. You bring it out, and then it immediately goes plus. You know, you just plus 3 off of it to get the effect. And then it can summon itself back as many times as you want to add like a plus whatever based on the earth in your deck. And then on later turns, you can then use the effect to search even more. This card's like a plus six, plus seven. <laughs> and kind of absurd. On the high end, on the low end, it's still a plus three. So, I mean, like, I don't even know what to say. Like, just the cards you search off of this can allow this to revive itself again. And then, like, extra stuff on top of that, can, you can at least, like, use the revival effect twice. So that means that this is three searches and two revives. That's ridiculous. And then all those cards you search... I mean, some of those also are free, like Gigantus or the Researcher. And if you're playing the right deck, those can then get you even more plus. That's that's insane. And then those can let you revive Block Dragon even more. This card's ridiculous. Where does Simo put it? Uh, I'm going to give this a C tier. C? Really? I mean, Block by itself is better than any ruler by itself because of one search, but... It's three of them at once. It's very specific to only one type in the game, but just the amount of advantage that this card can generate is absurd. Very specific. That that means it's a C. Um, but but it just it's so broken. You search it whenever you want. I mean, it's actually accessible. <laughs> I 
Okay, you put brilliant fusion in C as well. I don't. Uh, I don't get it. What? This card like legit carries the entire deck though, and that deck would be like good right now. So I don't know what to say. I mean, let's just move on. All right, next we have brilliant fusion. So I don't know exactly where to put this. So we're assuming brilliant itself comes back to one. That's it, not to three, because again, that wouldn't be fair to some of the extra deck cards that are once per turn. Yeah, I think this is a D as well. Brilliant fusion can easily come back. I think at one. Would it do anything without snow in the game? I don't see it. <laughs> without snow, it does a lot, right? We have to play the Garnet, and then you can technically search with Preda Plant, but that's fragile, that can get hand trapped. And that requires you to play, you know, yet another brick. So playing two bricks for like seven auto win cards, eh, and they're not actually auto win because they lose every hand trap, eh, so I don't think it's that strong at all. Where does he will put Brilliant? He wouldn't see. Okay, let's see, why does he put this in C? But the more and more this card was around, people found ways to make it work. It, yeah, this explanation of people made it work. Yeah, but like it was at three the whole time, and we had this OP card called Snow that you could easily combo it with. Uh, the only reason this got banned, I don't even know, what, I think Snow was around when it got banned, right? Because they put it to one, because it was really good in Thunder Dragons, and you just get free plus from it and fully take advantage of it in Thunder Dragons. And then they got banned, but no one was even playing it at once, so I think this can easily come off the list. Alma is an easy F tier. I mean, this card doesn't do anything anymore. Yeah, you could do like your free combo with it, but that like takes forever, and you have to have this specific field. And um, by today's standard, you have to do that turn one, which isn't actually that easy. And then you'll just get hand trapped into oblivion because there's no way you do that with protection up consistently. Like, if you use Is Sold, actually, it's not too hard a combo. But the fact that you have to play so many bricks, and you have to play library too, and you have to play the Exodia pieces to make that version. Or let's say you don't want to do that, you just want to draw off library, that still requires you to play library and summon that out. And then that on top of the Is Sold play and getting the thing. I mean, it doesn't sound too bad with all those shenanigans we have in this game, but it's a bit too difficult and requires a few too many bricks to really be considered good. I think he also put in an F tier, right? Yeah, he did. So, a card is safe return. I mean, it's an auto win. You play this in Pendulums without even thinking a second thought. I mean, you just go. Pendulums don't even go to grave. You just go like, Restage, Reborn, Selene, <laughs> Draw 5. Yeah, this card is broken. And that's Pendulum, right? Selene enables this thing like crazy. Not to mention, you know, X other strategy that can use the graveyard. Dragon Link can do it. Owlich can do it. I mean, every deck can take advantage of this in some way. Or at least most decks can. So this is like better than Gofu going first, but I think Gofu is still better at going second. Because this card is kind of not that great going second. Because they're just going to negate whatever effects you have to revive. They're not going to let those go through anyways. There's a ton of cards in this format that hurt your graveyard. Right, BD Crow, Aquero, bunch of anti-graveyard stuff. Um, the Goddess of the Closed World, which is really broken with Mascarena. There's a lot that can sort of make this not as good going second, whereas Gofu is still easily as broken going second since it's an inherent summon. I think that's a fair S tier, but there are sort of equals in that respect. Where does Zemo put this? He really likes generic cards for some reason. This card is one of the most poorly designed cards I've ever seen. This card is insane and should have never been made. I mean, like, that doesn't necessarily make it, but it's, you still have to draw it, I mean, these could easily, you could argue that these go down to A just because you have to draw them. We'll leave them here for now. Depends how, like, how jammed my S tier gets, I guess. We'll move them down if we find, like, enough cards that are just as broken, but you don't need to draw them. Because the chance of drawing a 1 of in this game in a 40 card deck is not very high. It's 1 in 8. When going first, slightly higher when you're going second, obviously. And, uh, yeah, winning 1 eighth of your game, I think some moving cards here are much stronger than that. <laughs> So next we have Change of Heart. Change of Heart would actually be good right now. It would be so good because, like, as a going second side deck card, you just activate, take their card, and then you can attack with it, which is pretty huge because it's worth more than just a one negate. Because normally this is worth one negate because you take their negate, slash, they negate this, boom, it's over. Now it's like if they don't have a spell trap negate, you can take one of their monster negates, slash, big attack cards, and, like, kill another one of their cards which makes this worth more than you're putting in. So this is a lot better than mind control. 
I think that's a C. I think that's fair. Where does Simo rank this card? I really like banned cards, in case you guys haven't noticed, by the way. We're just going to go on and on and really try to go in-depth onto every entry to fully sort of examine the purposes and whether or not I can come back. He wouldn't be. That's very surprising. Most people underrate Change of Heart. Oh, it's flashable. It's like one of the best sideback cards, but I don't think it's better than Duster or anything. <laughs> I mean, Duster is absurd. I don't think it's better than Reboot either. Because that was literally auto-win against um, Spell Trap decks, where this doesn't auto-win against the monster deck. So I, I think C is a lot more fair. I don't, I don't get the reasoning for B. That would mean, like, he's saying that Change of Heart is better than freaking Invoker. And just dish here? That's ridiculous. There's no way this thing's better than some of the cards he put in C. I'm gonna give this a B tier because it's a very strong card and every single deck can play it. And I think if it were legal, every deck might play it. I think he like really overrates Flash ability compared to actual power by itself. Chicken is also a C. It probably can't come back because it's more draws. I mean, it'd be so good in Pendulum then. Pendulum best deck. Right, this is, you just put this in Endymion and win extra games. <laughs> I mean, okay, it doesn't win that many, but you search off Terraforming, which then lets you play Terraforming. So that's like two cards, and Terraforming gets you an extra counter. That's really broken. Not to mention, this card's kind of dumb sometimes. It's like you have to like read it constantly to make sure it's like, oh yeah, they're at lower life points. I can't hurt them. This card's a dumb card. At one, it's probably reasonable. I don't think it can come off though, because it'll just like be too good. Like D tier cards for me can come back. This cannot. <laughs> Hey, what does he have to say about chicken game? The card's dumb. He went in D, really? This card is good because it allows you to draw cards. The OCG, I believe, has this card unlimited and it doesn't really do a whole lot, but Chicken Game has had its issues. It does set up for deep draw decks trying to FDK and the like, but this is actually like a fairly decent card, right? What does he mean fairly decent? It's an upstart. That's also a soul target and a terraforming target. This card's really good. <laughs> Alright, that's Cold Wave. I hate this card. I mean, like, what, would you play Cold Wave if it exists? This card's dumb. So you just play, like, an all-monster deck, and you slash in Cold Wave. If you go first, like, you just win, and if you go second against a trap deck, you still win. Like, if you open this turn one, and you're going first, and you use this, I guess the problem is this forces you to not run spell traps, and that really limits you, and then you have to consider the fact that it's just a one-off. So you have to build around a one-off. Yeah, with that, I don't think it's as broken, actually, because there's no deck right now, at least, that can fully do that. Like, maybe Danger Thunder Dragon, maybe, but... That does limit yourself. I think it's still a B, though, because you can build around this. And then, like, because all monster decks are still fine. If you ever draw this, you usually just win. <laughs> I think B is completely fair. Just because it limits yourself so much. You're going to have to use it at the start of your main phase one. I mean, Heat Wave is a card, right? Heat Wave's broken, if you think about it, but people don't play it. Now, of course, restricting your own summons is a lot worse than restricting your own spell trap. But I think the principle applies there, where you have to limit yourself in order to, to use this. This is actually generically good, though, because almost any deck can play this. A lot of combo decks- Did you just say almost any deck can play this? What in the world? What, what do you mean any deck can play this, though? Like, 90% of decks will kill themselves by playing this. You, not any. You have to hard build around it. It's broken. The problem is it's unsearchable. It might actually have to be lower, just because you can't reliably get it, and you have to build around it. Like, Heat Wave's a 3 of. And people still uh, hard build around that, and they don't see it every time, right? They can't just rely on Heat Wave. They have to try to make the rest of the deck good. Now, it's easier to make a deck around Cold Wave than Heat Wave, but it's a one of so only one-eighth of your hand is going first, and slightly more going second or going to see this, which I think brings it all down to C, honestly. What, what in the world do you mean, any deck? Simo, have you read this card? It literally shuts down so many decks. All right, Confiscation. This is interesting. In a hand trap written format like we have right now, it's probably an A going first. I think it's a B going second, though. It's still good going second because you can hurt, hit out like the beers they have. Um, but I don't know if it goes an A or B overall. I think it's an A because you have to look at their hand and then like, okay, this is what you're playing. This is what you have and your best card is gone. That's really strong, and you know exactly what the opponent has, so when you're using your negates next turn, it's really easy to negate exactly what will shut them down. No guesswork involved, just insane going first. It doesn't auto win though, but the, the thing is with this, like they can't negate it very easily either. If you're going first and you have this, they can't do anything about it, and <laughs> they can't stop you from using this. 
And then Noi Second is not nearly as good. Eh, it's kind of weird Noi Second. But A, you decide it for going first. Which sounds kind of bad until you realize, like, people literally play Columbine, and this is just pff, miles, miles better, right? <laughs> and then you realize that this is still decent going second because people will have hand traps in their hand going second pretty often. Not, like, super often, but it happens. And if it's, like, a draw or it's, like, a Nibiru that can be, like, okay, you broke their board, but they beat you with that hand trap, this can stop that from happening. And a lot of the time... They will actually negate this because they don't want you to hit that card. So then you know that they have the good card, even if this gets negated. Because the reason they negate this is because they have a good card. So I think this is a fair A. It's one of the best um, one-offs to draw. Again, though, the problem is it's a one-off. It's not super accessible. I might have to change this a lot, so don't take these as concrete right now. These can move as I go through the list and see, like... Okay, there's way too many S tiers, and I have to move them down. Or there's way too many D tiers, and you move them up. Because we're trying to like make a bell curve, so to speak. But like, it could be shifted either way because I'm not judging them correctly until I really see all of them at once. That's one of the first cards you point. You wouldn't B, wait, really? I think this is actually a B tier hand destruction card. Some of the other hand destruction cards we're going to be covering, I feel, are a lot stronger. I think this is actually one of the weakest of the bunch. This is one of the weakest? How? You actually just get rid of whatever you want. There's a lot of good graveyard cards in this game, but you choose. So, like, you just don't take them. And most cards with grave effects are not that good in hand. Like, most of the best cards in hand that you want to take out do not have good grave effects. Eldritch, Needle Sealing, Torrential, these things do nothing in grave. Pendulum, Servant does nothing in grave. A lot of the best cards in their hand will not have a good grave effect, so you just take those. You just kill them. Alright, that's Cyber Jar. This card's horrible. It doesn't do anything. This card doesn't do anything. You set this, and the opponent, like, just bounces it or something. I mean, it might be good, though. It might be good. This card's insane if it ever activates, because they made the effect just ridiculous. You know, my logic, though, is that Morphing Jar's in the game. Yeah, I don't I don't see it. This card sucks. <laughs> it's too hard to take advantage of. Maybe I'm wrong, but we're playing this in F. All right, Dandy. This boy's an A. I mean, wait, okay, Firewall's legal right now. He loops this. But you can't summon it with Firewall anymore. I don't know. Like, it's really broken if you use it more than once, but it's still, like, one monster equals three monsters. But you have the normal summon, so it's not as good as Gofu, but you can try to get it with Plant Link, so it's theoretically as good because you can search it. Wild, bro. Wild. But, uh, yeah, you can tutor this. We haven't used that Plant Link in so long. I need to, like, build a deck around it. But then you realize this thing's banned, and th this thing is banned, so the Orphrus combo doesn't even work as well either. Yeah, no. That is really broken. I mean. Hey, you put an A as well. We agree for once. Duo. Is Duo as good a Convocation? I don't think so. Let's read Duo, you know, just to make sure we're not missing anything. It's been a long time since this was legal. I don't think it's ever gotten to change, though. Pay a thousand, your opponent discards a random card, and then they can discard one more of their choice. Yeah, so the problem with Duo is if it's in the format, there's so many decks that can, like, tack in answers to it. Because they get to choose one of their discards. So they can just play a good discard effect. Like, I'm, okay, it's like... The extreme example would be play like Gemini Imps or play um, friggin' Brow and just draw. So there's that extreme example where if the opponent uh, discards it, you get you get an extra effect. And it, it like that would legit cancel the whole thing and you get another uh, random discard, which is theoretically could be a grave effect. So there's that aspect of this where it's like, okay, but it's a one-up, so people probably aren't going to build around it. It's really OP going first. It actually might be better than going second than Confiscation. But the problem with this is that because the opponent chooses one of them, and like there's a lot of bricks in people's decks these days, and a lot of grave effects, the one they choose basically doesn't like uh, hurt them that much. It generally will not hurt a lot, because they can um, discard a brick. And then the random one is like not as good as you looking at their hand and picking one, obviously. So it's like, one, you get to look at their hand, and you the, the meaningful one, which is in the, the case of Confiscation, the one you pick, and in Duo, it's the random one. Does that cancel out the extra discard? And I think the answer to that is yes, right? And the fact that there are cards that play around Duo, because one of them is a pick, you can actually try to get advantage off of it. 
I don't think people will literally play Gemini Imps to sort of play around it, but, I mean, that is, like, a fear, I think, you have to have when you're playing Duo. Like, what if the opponent's playing around it? We'll probably still give an A, though, because this usually just wins going first, still. I mean, the, if the opponent literally is going to start with four cards in hand, which is just ridiculous. But in the case of Confiscation, they're starting with five, but it's the worst five, because you took out their best, and you know what they have. I think that's equal. I think that's equal. He put d duo and S, really? Eh, you know what? You know, maybe I'll bump it down to A, actually. I think A might be a little bit better. Okay, you move it down to A. We agree there. The Bonfiscation, I think he's underrating that for sure. All right, down long. This is really weird. So I think extra deck cards, you have an advantage over main deck cards because they're easier to get to. You don't have to draw them. Unsearchable uh, main deck cards obviously are different. But I think that... Okay, is down long a B? Down long, I think goes in B is really good. It is insanely plus, but you do have to play some bricks to make it really good. Not against a B. Like, ac accessibility-wise, it's a rank 4 versus a level 5 Synchro. Which is, like, not too far off, because you have to have to have the Earth's Engrave. I think it's even for how insane the plus is, but for, um, the slight difficulty in accessing it. <laughs> and, like, fully taking advantage of it. Put in C? I think it's better than C. He doesn't explain enough for me to rip him apart, though. Heck, heck, heck. Distrudo, Distrudo's insane. Distrudo's so good. I want, I want them to ban Hulk just so I can play Distrudo again. I mean, think about it right now. Right now, it's a free Hulk with like any Dragon synergy cards, so, like Shrine, Ravine, Broken. You, you have other targets as well, so this is just one of your many options. And you can make a level seven synchro, which is really strong as well. And Distrudo is just a really good card. I mean, you go Yazi, Marimer, and then the Marimer can go into Hulk. Oh, yeah, this card would be broken right now. But at the same time, not like insta-win type of card. It's like, it's really accessible, which makes it really good. But it is just one summon, and you have to play half your life points for it. It's a really good summon, though. He wouldn't see. I mean, that's just fair. Yeah, we'll take it. The Imagine Fusion. Is this S? Which deck is a blue? Just, well, Virtual World. Full five summons. Yeah, that's pretty broken. And any deck with Issel, because, you know, Phoenix Blade exists in our game. Yeah, I think this is S tier. Not you, you. <laughs> going second, I don't think this is that broken, honestly. Going second, I don't think this is that broken, per se, but still, like, Revive Axe. And there's a lot of, um, negation cards that do Banish, like the Macabre. And it's just like a, you know, it's Soul Charge, but for Banish, which isn't as broken, per se, but also has, like, no restrictions, where Soul Charge does have restrictions. So I think that last year is pretty fair there. I think Simo would agree with me. Yeah, that's one of the first cards he ranked. This card is just absolutely absurd. Being able to special summon all of your banished monsters to go in for huge OTKs. This card should have like never been printed. This should have never been allowed. If this were legal today, this would just break the game entirely. No specificity though? Okay, you would literally left arm this. <laughs> that's why it's in us. So like I said, these were better to drop. Yeah, you would literally left arm for this. Okay, and there's not enough other targets. Like, with Grass Band, you wouldn't actually play Left Arm in a deck for this, I don't think, because uh, it would just wouldn't get anything else. Doesn't Left Arm Banish, actually? Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, Banish is your hand. Never mind. You Left Arm for this thing, so I'm the bad. Yeah, this is this is an S tier, because you get essentially have four, co four copies of it. Because banishing a monster in your hand and then summoning it back is better than having it in your hand. This, yeah, this is S tier because you have four. Yeah, it's good. Let's come back to four when it's at one. It's a stupid left arm offering. See, this is why you watch my tier list. I go for like five hours, highly in depth. So you won't just gloss it or it'll be super good. Me, it's like you can left arm offering and then make this even more broken. All right, Jin, I don't know, man. Like, Drytron exists. Does Jin work with Drytron? So I know you can like search this really easily. In that cross, at least. I don't know about Drytron. Um, 1200 attack, is that, mm, yeah, yeah, like, where, I, 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 yeah, I think this is like a B, just because you, Drytrons exist. I believe, if it, this isn't searchable, that's not as good, obviously, but I believe it is. <laughs> I thought it was, so you can, like, fiend support it. No, obviously, obviously, you play the best card, you play Fight for Meister, and you get that that way, and you just win. Yeah, uh, assuming it's searchable, this card's insane. It's not quite here, because rituals aren't that good. They're like, and this, this, this just wins also, like, 
<laughs> getting a barrier statue plus Masquerina is just as good as getting a ritual that prevents the opponent from summoning, so. Very oppressive card, but again, you do need to be playing a ritual-focused deck, but this card was one of the reasons why the Necros format was what it was. I think I'm gonna give this a C tier. Again, it needs to be played in a specific deck, but this is like on Vanity's emptiness level of broken and made it so that a lot of decks couldn't even play in the format. Why does Seamal say like, oh, it's a specific deck, so it's a lower tier? I mean, if that deck is good, then the card is broken. <laughs> Right? It doesn't matter if it needs to be specific, as long as that specific deck is a good deck, which I think Dry Spots, especially with their new support, are. Maybe it's not as searchable as I'm remembering it as. Alright, next up, Eclipse Wyvern. This card this card's decent. It can probably come back, but then again, not really, because Love Unir still exists, and Love Unir is absurd. I mean, it's just a free search as a grave effect, which is better than a summon search because you can just dump it or mill it or discard it. See, what doesn't see as well? Let's go. Base. Respecting the Eclipse Fiber. Next, Norden. Norden's not that great. Like, is the fusions at one? How else are you making this? Fusion sub block sheep. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> is it a D? Okay, it's like really good with instant fusion though. Okay, so this is like as good as instant fusion is when instant fusion has it. Let's think about it that way. Is that Millennium Ice? How much better is Norden than Millennium Ice? Millennium Ice is really good already though. I think it's just a C. It would be like pretty broken with instant fusion, but A, it's not as broken as some of these other cards are. And B, it takes up an extra deck slot and you can't millenniumize, which itself is really good. So I think, I think C is fair. You put an A, really? Why? Let me see. Norden being able to generate a single rank four just by itself and was responsible for so many different FDKs and loops and so many different shenanigans. When this card was legal, every single deck was pretty much playing Norden just because it was that powerful. What does Norden do right now? Rank fours aren't good anymore. <laughs> well, rank fours are still good, but like they're not good enough anymore. Does a rank four equal as good as a, as a hand trap negate? Kind of. They have to set it up too. Nor is not that broken. We'll even see in case people find ways to hard make it, let's say it that way, because you could do that with Zodiacs, and Zodiacs are kind of legal right now. No rat, but no broad rule, but you know, we still have some Zoo shenanigans with Tiger and Shackanine. Next, Snow. Snow is a C. I mean, it's broken. Isn't it B? Not. Uh, okay, with Brilliant at zero, Snow is a C. With Brilliant at three, then Snow is like a, a A, but. <laughs> Yeah, it's not that accessible right now. It's really broken if it, you know, goes anywhere, though, because it's, like, multiple interruptions plus, um, you know, pluses, so. It's not quite as broken as some of the other stuff, though. Seamal puts in C as well. Fiber Jar. Card's garbage. Card doesn't why When are you ever resolving this thing? You, even if you, like, get it off an Eldritch, it's not even that good, because, like, first of all, the opponent, there's stats with, like, banish card stuff now these days. Maybe you play a deck that can take advantage of banish cards, but then you get... Those decks can't play a flip effect. Ugh. It's useless. <laughs> like, triggering it yourself. Like, you brick. So then, instead of trying to combo, you just, like, put all your effort into some setting this and flipping it with a Boral Guard or whatever can do it. And then you realize, oh, yeah, I just added extra bricks in my deck, and also I lost my normal summon. It's not that good. It is really not. So you want to put it in D? Well, okay. This is better than his F tier, but, like, he has... <laughs> But, like, the card's horrible. My D tier is a lot stronger than his, to be fair. And, like, these aren't nearly as good as these, and these aren't nearly as good as these. So I think I... Fishboard. I don't know all the Fishboard combos, but I've seen them before. They're dumb, so let's just see. I think Simo did the same thing. And he did, and he used the weird logic of... Oh, you have to play specific cards. Like, okay, but I guess these specific cards aren't that good. Mermails are good, though. Can you do this with, like, an Atlantean deck? You, I don't know. I guess the deck it's in isn't that broken without it, and it's... Well, you just talc and do this. I'm not... Yeah, it's really good, but you do have to level up through lower water. Mm -hmm. See, it's fair. Giant Trunado. I mean... Trune. Oh, that's what Trune. If you say Trune with, like, a Japanese accent, it sounds like Tornado. <laughs> Trunado. Yeah, that's what Trune is about. It's so dumb, but... Okay, I... I get it now. <laughs> Just randomly says word in Japanese accent, realizes that's what it's supposed to be. <laughs> Discovery of the year, boys! Alright, so Giant Trunade is, uh, it's, it's weird. Okay, so, does this auto win against Eldritch? Kinda. Yeah, it kinda does, because you, you just OTK them. If you OTK, though, right? If you're playing Alter Guys, it no longer auto wins against Eldritch, because it doesn't kill everything. 
I mean, it's cartoon. Okay, the problem with this is, like, you can use it to clear the opponent's black row while simultaneously giving yourself cards back, which can do something. Like, you can put up scale. You can, like, abductor, right? Get resolve its effect, and then use this. Kill the opponent's back row, because they probably can't hit an abductor with it. Like, most back rows don't do anything to spell traps. If they up spell traps, they can kind of pop it, but let's say they didn't, they weren't able to, and then you can get back the abductor, and then you resolve it again. <laughs> so there's that fun stuff, but is it as good as Duster? No. Okay, come off the list, probably. Duster's insane, though. Duster should get banned, actually, so no. <laughs> I don't think it's quite abusable as a one of. Like, a cold, it's not as good as Cold Wave. It's, a, it's such a cool card, though. I mean, like, Hatred May exists, and Hatred May is basically this, but without the, you know, bonus of being able to co try to combo, and it also doesn't hit Floodgates, which makes it a lot worse. But, like, Hatred Aid, I mean, it's not even that bad of a card, honestly. Hatred Aid's a decent card. Duster exists, and this card sucks. Because, <laughs> you yeah, think Duster's legal, so this isn't that much stronger. Shouldn't, doesn't need to be banned. Where does Nemo put this? Yeah, I don't see it. Okay. <laughs> guess we. Okay, I guess like we'll just give him the benefit of the doubt and say you gave a similar tiering to me, so we don't have to like get mad that out. Cause like you guys haven't even seen any of the like really like Gofu is pretty bad. You haven't seen anything yet, all right? B. Where does this say? Let's see. It's like good, but uh, I mean, you can get it with Jasmine. That's kind of good, but it's not that broken compared to Danny Line, for example. It'll make Jasmine good again and Lone Fire good again, which means I want to see it back. But it's a bit too good with how can you make Calamity combo with it. Not Calamities, but like the, the Synchro Calamity. Yeah, so you have a Globe and C, right? Alright, so this is be controversial, but Graceful's not an S at all. Graceful's an A. If you draw Graceful, you don't auto-win. At all. It doesn't. Like, you have like a pretty good chance of winning, right? Much better chance if you didn't draw it. And you can play in every deck. But you don't win the game instantly when you draw Grace 1 as unsearchable one of. If you draw this, you do instantly win the game. Like this, uh, I'd rather have free three monsters than draw three discard two. I uh, mean, I think it's that easy. This card's broken, but like I don't instantly win the game if I draw one graceful. I don't, and it's an unsearchable one of. I do instantly win the game <laughs> if I draw Gofu and it's a one sur unsearchable one of. Same thing with card safe return, same thing with this is searchable. Doesn't count. Like, you're never gonna left arm into Grace, well, you can left arm into this. Uh, I, yeah, see what puts in an S. Let's, let's try to hear why he puts in an S. Graceful Charity, S tier. This should not be a surprise. Like I said, almost every single draw spell is probably going to be up here. But it doesn't, like, instantly win the game. And it's, for an unsearchable one of that's banned to be, like, because the S tier for unsearchable one of is you're, you're competing with cards that instantly win the game. Right, there are unsearchable one-offs in this game where if you draw them and they don't get negated, they their effect will carry you just straight, straight up full combo by themselves without taking up your normal summon. That's what these cards do. This card doesn't do that. This card doesn't, it just doesn't. Like, yeah, every deck can play it, but if I'm going to play a card that's banned and I get it off the ban list at one, it's not going to be this. I'm not going to try to, you know have an increased chance of winning one-eighth of my games. With Pendulum, I can draw this a lot more often. <laughs> but uh, that's, that's different. Pendulum is just OP. I am going to maybe have a one-eighth chance in instantly winning the game. I'm probably instead just going to pick an extra deck card or a searchable card that will give me an increased chance of winning, but in more games, more than one-eighth of my games, because I can easily access it. Graceful doesn't have that going. I think that's a good way to end off part one. Yeah, my takes are kind of weird, but, um, first of all, we haven't seen, you haven't seen all of Simo's bad takes yet. Oof. Part two. Let's see, what do we have in part two? Yeah, there's some rough stuff in part two. In part three, I'm gonna rip him apart in part three. So, me all for today, guys. Take care, y'all. Goodbye. I look forward to part two.